Hi everyone, my name is Dr Frankie. I'm back with Exante to answer all of your questions that you've been submitting for our Q&A session today. Uh, so let's get straight into it. The first question is, is it possible to put type 2 diabetes into remission? In simple terms, the answer to this is yes. When you are first diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which is done via a blood test, the doctor will give the patient two week, a two week period where they can go and alter their diet, eat more lower glycemic index foods, eat less sugar, exercise more, try and lose a bit of weight, and then come back two weeks later and have those diagnostic tests done again and in this period many patients are actually able to reverse the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. For patients with established type 2 diabetes already perhaps for a long period some patients are able to successfully induce remission of their diabetes through dietary changes and many GP practices will offer patients participation in educational programs which often happen over many weeks maybe a 12 week period where the patient will be enrolled into education activities and courses to become what we call expert patients and this is where they receive training and education on the appropriate diet to manage their blood sugar and their diabetes, how to exercise properly, how to monitor their blood sugars properly and many patients are very successful on this but it does require motivation and sort of the ability to engage in those educational resources. There has actually been a randomised control trial called Direct, which was published in The Lancet, which is a very reputable medical journal. And it was done on over 300 patients at 49 different GP practices. And the results of this study showed that at the end of the 12 month period, over half of the patients enrolled in the trial were successfully able to reverse their type 2 diabetes and induce remission, and therefore didn't require any anti-diabetic drugs or insulin. And for many general practitioners, the ultimate goal is to try and reverse the type 2 diabetes of many patients. And if that's not possible, we still shouldn't neglect attempting to improve diet and increase exercise, whilst many patients will be managed with oral hypoglycemic agents, so they are tablets which can reduce blood sugars such as metformin, or indeed some patients will be managed with insulin, dietary changes and exercise should still be a focus of their management. Question number two is how can I maintain my weight after weight loss? This is a really tricky one and I really feel for lots of people who go through this intense period and are successful at losing weight and then unfortunately the weight starts to creep back on. I think my top tip for this is to lose weight slowly and in a sustainable way. If you are adopting very drastic short-term weight loss methods then they're unlikely to be sustainable and it's likely that when you come off that diet plan or you come off whatever you were doing you might find that you struggle to keep the weight off and that is completely normal it happens to so many patients but I think that the importance is doing it slowly and sustainably and that's why the key is always to educate yourself properly about diet nutrition and exercise so that the changes you're making become sustainable lifestyle changes and not just quick fixes if you can understand your own energy requirements and your nutritional requirements and how that might vary depending on how much exercise you're doing and things then you'll be much better equipped to keep the weight off long term so my top tip there would be to educate yourself properly and watching videos such as this is definitely going to be a step in the right direction towards doing that question number three is what can i do to improve my digestive health well digestive health and the gut microbiome is certainly a hot topic at the moment and I'm really glad that it's getting these conversations and people are talking about it because it's hugely important. We know that our gut health is intrinsically linked to the rest of our health in general and our mental health. So focusing on this will definitely do you some good. I think number one is that most of us don't eat enough fiber and fiber is a crucial nutrient that is often neglected, particularly when people opt for lower carbohydrate diets. They often therefore lead to kind of a nutritional fiber deficiency. The NHS recommends that we consume 30 grams of fiber a day. And actually the UK average is about half of this, about 15 grams a day, so not enough at all. So doing things to increase fiber in your diet will certainly help improve your digestive health. Things like swapping white bread to brown bread, things like eating more sweet potato, more legumes, things like flaxseed and linseed on your yogurt or cereals will definitely boost your fibre intake. So that's number one. Number two is to eat more plant-based foods. And when you're doing this, variety is key. So we all know to eat five portions of fruit and vegetable a day, but I would really like you to 
try and make a conscious effort to increase the variety. So instead of eating five portions of broccoli, for example, try and get different types in terms of colours, textures, and a mixture of green leafy vegetables and root vegetables and things. And that means you're gonna get lots of different nutrients, vitamins and minerals that is gonna support your gut microbiome and your digestive health. Number three is to not forget to drink plenty of water. We know that people who don't drink enough water often are more likely to be constipated, and we see this a lot in the summer months or patients who are admitted to hospital. So make sure you do drink plenty of water. And exercise also has been linked to digestive health. Patients who are sedentary, particularly in hospital or after operations, or people who are working from home sat at their desk all day, may be more likely to suffer with constipation and not open their bowels daily. So making a conscious effort to get up out of your chair every hour and exercise at least three times a week is definitely gonna help your digestive health. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. I'm sure we'll do another one of these soon. And if any of you have any more questions, feel free to leave us a comment in the comment box below. My name is Dr. Frankie and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.